All right, so welcome to the Mojo Three Troubleshooters Guide, or entertainment program as we might want to refer to it. First off, um, in the first batch of brushes that we sent out, some of the uh, continuous feedback we got mostly was regarding uh, air bubbles inside the fluid reservoir. And uh, what that's going to require is you taking your, your, your wrench that comes with the brush here, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this. And what I've done on this list, taking a little beeswax, just put it right down here in the threads. We're doing it to all the brushes now, but there was the first batch that went out, to, a few of them didn't get that. So now it's standard. And uh, you can snug this considerably tighter than you would normally, like your uh, typical uh, Japanese fluid tips. This thing wants to have a nice amount of torque on it to snug it down nicely. And uh, so after that, you've got that and you've already taken this off. And what you may notice is when you, actually when you put this back on, I usually like to pull the trigger back a little bit here just to keep from possibly bending the, the, the needle. It is very thin on the end there. So you'll notice there's an O-ring here on the, on the ear cap. And so what you want to do is actually plug it in. base cleaner here. You can do this with water, whatever you want to do. Check the pattern. There's a couple drops in there. And what you'll notice is sometimes if you refund this thing really hard or try to tighten the, the air cap down, you're going to change the dimension here and actually impede the airflow around the end and it's going to distort the spray pattern. This one isn't too bad, but what you'll want to do if you do get a, an odd pattern because of how tight it is, what you'll do is just slowly rotate this back just a hair. It might take just a quarter of a turn, uh, not much more than that, to correct the flow and the distance between there, as well as still maintaining a seal uh, around the O-ring. So that was the probably the biggest issue we ran into in the first 30 brushes that went out. Um, secondly, um, the air valve is a different beast altogether than what we have with the uh, previous Mojo brushes. And you'll notice that um, when you press down you hear the sound of air a little bit escaping through the, what seems to be the body. And to me, when I'm working with this, it's kind of a signal that maybe my air pressure is just a little, little high, especially working with Euros. On a water base it's probably okay, but you'll notice that once you have the brush down and you're, you're painting, you don't get that sound anymore. You get a little bit of manipulation in the, in the tone maybe that's coming out of it from the, from the air, but the way the piston is designed, uh, it's just inherent that you're going to get a little bit of blow by with the, uh, the air. But other than that, it's going to deliver the paint and get the air out there properly, so um, that's just something that I've grown with actually with using this brush in comparison to the previous Rich Pens. What else do we have? Um, well, the trigger is pretty much self-explanatory uh, as far as the shape and the function of it. Um, there isn't much really troublesome there. If you do get into an issue where you feel it's too tight or too stiff, what you can do is to run a little bit of grease. and I like to use stinky axle grease because that way I know it's on there. And I've got plenty of it around here, bearing grease. It's going to be really difficult for me to show you guys where it's at, but right down in there's a little piston. Can you see that? Is that working? Oh, 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 I guess. Okay, so right down in there, there's a little piston where the tip of this thing, you know, will engage with the trigger. You could drop a little bit of oil. I know I've got a little can of oil here. Not much, just gonna take I even would probably prefer that you put it onto the actual trigger here. Let's see this oil can. Has seen better days. What happened to this one? The snowmobile fell on it. Oh that's right, snowmobile damage. Alright, so I just take a little bit of oil on it. That way you're not gonna be flooding out this whole chamber here. 
uh, with oil, but just enough to go ahead and put down. It'll work its way down between the side, but you, know, you want to blow it through for a little bit so you're not contaminating whatever your work surface is. And it really makes a big difference. And the nice thing about it, it doesn't have the O-ring, so it doesn't get all sticky and kind of hung up sometimes like my previous mojos would uh, if you were to get a little backflow from a leaky seal or a loose seal. And speaking of seals, I will go grab these screwdriver and I will be right back. Alright, regarding the fluid seal, we spent a lot of time polishing up the contact points uh, on this needle here to get a nice even glide through the seal. It is a Teflon seal, um, but the dimensions of it and the resilience it will bounce back a little bit. It's, you know, somewhat a flexible object, so learning how to adjust it properly is very important. And right now I have mine completely adjusted, but if you look carefully down into the body of the airbrush, you will see a slot. I don't know if you're going to be able to pick it up on the camera. Probably not. Can you see it there? A little light coming in. Difficult, huh? Alright, so there's a little slot down here. What we do is take one of the little screwdrivers. You know, something about this size here, we typically sold these with the old uh, Mojos and we'll have them available again. We had to reorder these, but they are on their way soon. So all you do is go in there, you line up your screwdriver, you find a notch in the seal, compression screw, and then what you'll do is just give it a tweak. If you need to tighten it up or if it's too loose or paint's blowing by, then what you'll want to do is just give it a little tightness, maybe a little quarter turn. Don't go more than a quarter turn at a time. If it needs to be loosened, you do the same thing, but the opposite direction. You want to go counterclockwise uh, and a quarter turn at a time. But I already had mine set up and sealed. So the next thing you can do after you get your brush clean off, you want to assemble this back in here. You can just take a little bit of that household oil and don't coat the whole needle, just the contact area. Right here. And it's just going to take just a little bit. Like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and place it carefully through the hole, and that gets the seal lubricated nicely. And I'll go ahead and pull that back out, put the trigger back in, make sure that it's functioning correctly. You got no stick. It does sound completely different than the Mojo, but I assure you that it's working just fine. And you're going to put your needle guide in. The thing about the needle guide is you're not going to really have to do much to this. The way we designed it and the geometry on it and leaving the, uh, the brass surface allows for a nice smooth transition of movement between your sub toggle and the needle guide and the trigger. So then you'll insert that, making sure that you have this guy sticking up to the whole body of the brush. The spring, take the variable right end, that goes in first. And in goes the needle carefully. Now that I have my glasses, I can do this without bending needles. I get bifocals these days. I'm getting old. Right. And lastly, the clamp for the needle guide. And then your handle. You are good to go. And sometimes, you know, when you're spraying, if you can't, it doesn't seem like the paint's shutting off. Chances are there's a, uh, a piece of dirt in the fluid tip, which I don't have one flying around here loose. Like, can you grab me a fluid tip thing? We'll talk about the fluid tip. Okay. So, if you're spraying and putting your brush back together, and you first notice that when you assemble it, um, paint is continually coming out. Well, chances are, what's happening, you're just not getting a good seat in the relationship with the, the needle and the fluid tip. And what could be happening is, uh, there could be a little bit of beeswax, possibly. Uh, well, actually, the beeswax would be on the outside here, but there's possible that if you put too much wax around your threads, you might have gotten some down inside this area before you threaded it back on. And then uh, what'll happen is that'll gum up the inside of that and uh, you know, make it difficult for the paint to get around it. 
but um, what I'll do is usually like I'll have a bent or a busted up needle that uh, you know from use and change and stuff like that. I'll keep that one around and I'll just use that just to kind of feel what the inner surface of the fluid tip feels like. And oftentimes even with like paint, um, you can get little pieces of dried up paint from you know parts of the cup or from more how you're storing paint that will impede the paint as well. But after you get it all cleaned out, you can take a, uh, depending on what you're using, and I like to use one of these guys here because it has just the right diameter for me to stick in this fluid tip. That's another really nice feature about this larger size tip. I could not do that with the Japanese brushes. And you can just squirt it clean right like that, and you'll be able to watch the flow and see exactly that you have an unrestricted flow through this uh, fluid nozzle. So then you want to put it back together and you know sometimes if that didn't even do it what you'll want to do is you'll try to find the sweet spot maybe you put your uh, needle in too far and you might have a, an area that's worn on one side or another you'll find actually find that spot on the needle and what you can do is just slowly rotate your needle in that to rotate that and you'll start to feel that go away in the uh, fluid tip and you can do that with compound too that's another thing you'll have to get out of your fluid tip once you make that adjustment that way. So, I hope that has covered all the little uh, issues and some of the things that you'll have to look for when you're reassembling and cleaning your airbrush. Certainly if you guys have any questions or anything, contact us at learnairbrush.com.